Hi, I'm Paul Bryan. And I'm Brian O'Day. And on this Maintenance Minute video, we're going to be taking a look at the installation practices of a CFM lubrication unit. This is your CFM 56-7B loop pump. Before we go and continue on with the install procedures, we're going to go through and do some just from general familiarization. We have our rear scavenge port, our forward scavenge port, our accessory transfer gearbox port, and then your main oil supply port. And on the back side, you have your scavenge oil filter port. You have your supply filter and then your chip detectors. Since we're required for the AMM to go and change out our packings, I'm going to go and use the scribe to go and remove our packings. When you go to get your new packings, you're going to go and check your correct usage code and your correct part number in accordance with your AMM IPC. When you go to put your new packings on, you're going to go on and lubricate your packings. So you're going to just take your engine oil, make sure they're all lubed up really good, and then put them back on the shaft. Then again, take your engine oil, So Brian, uh, he took care of the lubrication unit, got the O-rings back on the lubrication unit, and he's preparing for installation. Uh, here I'm taking a look at the gasket seals, uh, which you'll see on the scavenge supply lines on the lubrication unit. And I'm doing a real basic inspection of these things to make sure that I don't have any uh, uh, nicks or dents on the metal surface, or I don't have any uh, deterioration or cuts or breaks in the uh, O-ring material. I have an example here. Uh, where we found a defect. Uh, this is going to make me suspect that we have possible damage uh, to the seating surface of the lubrication unit or potential uh, um, stripping or removing of the insert, which later on is going to cause a leak after reinstallation uh, during our idle leak check validation procedures. As always, validating that the gasket seal is uh, correct and there are no problems with it. I'm validating per the aircraft maintenance manual, illustrated parts catalog, that I am using the proper part number, the proper usage code, and uh, we can go on and complete our installation procedure. All right, going a little bit further with this, if I have a suspect damaged gasket seal, I'm gonna wanna take a, a look at the port location for which this was removed, all right, and validate that I don't have any damage to the seating surfaces here, and that my inserts are properly installed and they are not damaged before reinstallation. All right, so I've got poor Brian down underneath the engine here and I'm on the video camera. Brian, you could point out there is an alignment pin on the uh, accessory gearbox pad for the lubrication unit. And then we're going to go ahead and line up the lubrication unit onto the drive pad. So we're going to center that up, seat the lubrication unit, and then install the V-clamp. All right, I've had to reposition just a little bit. We'll show Brian here securing the V-clamp to the lubrication unit. I'm going to go ahead and secure with a socket and then apply proper torque. Point to the uh, V-band clamp we've secured around the lube unit to the accessory gearbox drive pad. We're gonna go ahead and run down the nut with a socket. And then we're going to apply proper torque.
Okay, I've repositioned again here. There's multiple manifolds that need to be reinstalled. Some of them are secured with bolts. Some of them are uh, secured with B-nuts. Uh, we have one example down here on the bottom of the accessory gearbox. Uh, we have the B-nut secure, uh, but when we run it down and uh, we snug it down before torque and during torque, we want to use a backup wrench to prevent any, de any deformation or damage to the manifold tube. All right, so in this video, we went ahead and reinstalled uh, the manifold tubes to the lubrication unit with the exception of one. Maintenance tip, look at the gasket before installation. Obey the installation instructions for seals, preform packings, O-rings, and gaskets. Do not cause damage to the rubber seal when you install the gasket. Uh, what we have installed first is the oil scavenge supply to the scavenge filter. We installed the oil supply to the oil system manifold, the AGB TGB scavenge return line, that one's still not secured. We have the rear sump scavenge and the forward sump scavenge. Part of this video is uh, making some maintenance tips here. We want to show you a couple of things to avoid doing while installing manifold tubes to these lubrication unit. Uh, one is uh, here we have a tight tube, all right? We're trying to get the gasket seal up between the manifold and the lubrication unit. I want to avoid the aspect of pushing the gasket seal in between. Uh, this can cause some damage to the uh, O-ring material of the gasket seal and cause uh, leakage problems during our repair confirmation procedures. All right, and so in that last maintenance example, we went ahead and removed the gasket seal, re-inspect, uh, then we reinstalled correctly between the manifold and the lubrication unit. Now we're gonna go ahead and run it down with a socket and apply proper torque. All right, we've just re-secured this uh, manifold connection. Right, we want to verify that the manifold is centered properly right, and that we have no gap right, between the uh, manifold connection and the lubrication unit with the gasket seal installed. All right, we've completed the installation of the CFM lubrication unit. Uh, the one thing that remains is to do an idle power leak check. If everything checks out, we're gonna go ahead and return to service. That completes this CFM maintenance minute on the installation practices of a CFM lubrication unit. For all you do, thank you and have a great day.